private inventories, there was a banker long in play at the moment, 8946. 8946, that was at 923. Private inventories will spike at 930. So we're seven minutes before private inventories on that tweet. So you can already see that we're in a banker long from 8946. So we're long going into this private inventory release. My next tweet, which is at 929, one minute before the release, you'll see that just under a minute now, so a sell stop hard under the current long. So now I've put my sell stop order below the current long in case the inventory comes out negative and we get pushed into a quick short trade, close out the longs and quickly get short for the volatility explosion that we always expect. It's never a big explosion, but it's still an explosion. Still going to make some good money for retail trade. Now, obviously, you've just seen this tweet here from 923, 8946. And then obviously what happened? The private inventory release came out and we went from our buy trade, which was in here. You can see the banker long, which I included in the chart below. You can see that banker long trade was visible. So we bought into the banker long. We then put our stops just in behind this green candle here before the inventory release for a sell stop order. And then boom, big rip to the upside, beautiful rip to the upside uh, for a very, very nice trade. $500 per contract maximum swing inside of obviously a short period of time that was 11 minutes 11 minutes to make 500 dollars profit per contract on oil by taking a tuesday night off a tuesday night to trade this release will have paid tens of thousands of dollars this year just on trading tuesday nights at uh, 9 30 each day each tuesday night 9 30 private inventories and then we take off the trade, we get ready to do the business. Sometimes we don't have a trade going into the release, but we trade the volatility coming out on small size as a retail trade. It's not a big commercial trade. The volumes are not there for commercials at that time of night, but it's a very nice retail trade. And uh, what a lovely outcome, guys. Called in advance, you can see there's the original trade there, 89.46, there's the time, 9.23, seven minutes before the release, seven minutes before the release, and then there's the release there, boom, straight up. Big trades, big profits, lovely outcomes. Our short bond uh, concession building process has just traded down to 28s from a high price of 27s. Oh, traded 27s, I think actually, 25s, 26s. So that was $1,000, guys. Oh, yes. That was our second $1,000 swing on the short bond. Top edges off of that concession sell that we warned you about, that concession sale that we warned you about last night in classroom, that we told you there is still a concession sale, which we then reminded you about in the tweets. When did I remind you about it in the tweets? Was it this morning? Yep, it was this morning. The micro bullish bond is still getting some of the concession back overnight and this morning. Lovely profits. Just remember the concession. Why did we say just remember the concession at that point in time? Because it was coming into that concession area where we sold off from yesterday. So if we sold off that same concession price from yesterday and we tell you to remember the concession as the price hits this area, guess what? You're probably trading into the concession. That's why we reminded you. It's time to get short. And that short's just made $1,000, guys. Pretty good? Damn it, Nikki, it's pretty good. Gotta love that bit of business. Gotta love that bit of business. But who doesn't love the uh, key references that we gave out in last night's classroom, guys? Who doesn't like the key references? These were brutal. Brutal in their effectiveness. Brutal in their ability to be executed, brutal in their outcomes. They were just fantastic. Key, le key references, guys, key references. Not that difficult to spot, not that difficult to, uh, to trade against, not that difficult to put on, the sc put it on your screens and uh, try and figure out what the hell even were you talking about? I don't get it. I don't get what the 
storyline is from these trade narratives. And, um, you know, it's just about copying the levels down. It doesn't mean, we talked about this this morning, it doesn't mean that there's going to be a buy at it. It doesn't mean there's going to be a sell at it. It's an area that you now focus on. This is what we talked about this morning, about being able to focus at the right times enables you to not be too uh, tied up in all the stories. It enables you to not be too tied up in the storyline as it evolves. Being able to focus allows us to make those kind of decisions. It allows us to look at the markets from a, a, a real focus point of view without tiring out, because that's obviously what can happen. You can end up getting tired out into these narratives. And if you're tired out, you're starting to look for buys everywhere. You're starting to look for sales everywhere. That's not going to work for you guys. That is not going to work for you. It's too difficult to stay focused that amount of time. So you've got to pick and choose your way through these focus areas, haven't you? You've got to pick and choose your way through these focus areas to make sure, basically, that when you're uh, ready to trade, that you are switched on and you're fresh and you're ready to trade. Pretty simple stuff.